I'm going to be reviewing Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire by J.K. Rowling, but I don't have it because I'm at Gabby's house. Say hello, Gabby! Hi! Yeah! So I don't have it, but I'm probably going to leave it here in picture form if iMovie lets me do that because I use my phone and it's an app and it may not be nice and let me... I want you to see the sweatshirt and the awesomeness that is this sweatshirt. It says, I am Book Lion. And then on the back, it says, Queen of Book Jungle. Can you see it? I hope you can see it because Gabby got this for me for my birthday. And it's the most comfortable and amazing thing. If you don't know what Book Lion is, it is basically a thing that Portland Bananas Book said. And her channel is fabulous, so definitely go check her out. Under the sea, no. Starling is better down wear a sweater. Take it from me. So in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, it is Harry's fourth year back at Hogwarts. This year, instead of having Quidditch matches, they are having something called the Triwizard Tournament, in which two other schools come to Hogwarts, Bo Baxton's and Durmstrang. Any student who chooses to possibly participate in the Triwizard Tournament puts their name in the Goblet of Fire. The catch is that you have to be in your either sixth or seventh year of wizarding school. The Triwizard Tournament seems to become a quad wizard tournament, when three students' names are chosen, and the Goblet of Fire decides to spit back out Harry's name. Y'all, this is up there with Prisoner of Azkaban for me. It was so good, and it was 729 pages, and I flew through that because, one, I went on, like, a little road trip that weekend, and so I had more time than I would normally sit and read, and so I had a lot of reading done, and it was so good, and I need to read the fifth one, and I have it, and... Fly! I have the fifth book. It's upside down. It is huge. This is this is huge. That's probably why I haven't started this yet. I'm reading Shatter Me. And then I'm gonna attempt to finish Shatter Me and this for the Christmas book too with Fawn doing this weekend. Yay! I'm not gonna lie, even though I knew who was going to die in this book and I knew what was going to happen, I teared up a bit. I did. That scares me because I knew it was going to happen. So I'm like, what's gonna happen? For the last books, I've given this five stars on Goodreads. It had such an awesome plot, and all the characters are just getting better and better. And, of course, we're starting to get romance pushed a little bit up in here, because obviously Harry and Hermione and Ron are getting older. And so obviously, as you get older, you start liking people and wanting to date people. There was so much information being dropped in this book. I loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Well, that is the end of the non-spoilery section, so if you have not read this book, I would leave, read it, and then come back and we can discuss Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire in all of its awesomeness. Bye! In the beginning of this book, we have Harry going to the Quidditch World Cup with the Weasleys, and I loved the Quidditch World Cup because it was so cool, because it's kind of like the Super Bowl for us now. Then we have the Death Eaters making those muggles float in the air, and the dark mark symbol shows up. A lot of people are doubting the fact that Voldemort is going to come back, but he's, he's gonna come back. He's gonna come back. I really wish I had my book, because I had some, like, hilarious quotes, dog-eared, and it's not with me. I really liked Professor Moody, the new Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher, until we found out that he was Barney Crouch's son. It was really weird, because I was kind of confused in the beginning, because I knew he was Barty Crouch because I had seen the movie, but then I was kind of confused because he seemed so nice to Harry and he was getting him on his good side, and that doesn't seem like an, something an evil person would do. I mean, not to me anyway. Obviously, he was evil, and in the end, he tried to kill Harry for Voldemort, so evil person, even though he was kind of nice in the beginning. I understand that there not being a consecutive... Defense Against the Art Teacher must come back as a plot or it's like a running joke But it's sort of starting to annoy me because I want there to be one person like I loved Professor Lupin But of course he had to leave because he was a werewolf it's almost like in the Mortal Instruments series when Simon's band can't choose a name So it's kind of a running joke that they keep having different names But eventually it just gets really annoying and so I hope in City of Heavenly Fire they choose a stupid name. Why am I talking about moral instruments? I honestly really, really, really loved the Triwizard Tournament, even though all of the tasks could have killed Harry and essentially killed Cedric Diggory. But I really loved him having to get the dragon egg, him having to save Ron and Hermione, and I really, really enjoyed the last 
task where they had to find the cup in the maze and it was crazy because I knew it was going to happen, but it was so cool. I love Robert Pattinson as Cedric Diggory. He's a much better Cedric Diggory than he is in Edward Cullen. Kristen Stewart brings him down. And that's when I was tearing up in the end when he got killed. Because he was just, he was trying to save Harry when the person said, Aveda Kedavra, I killed him. And then we learn about the three, three, crow, cr what are they called? The three, cr confu, can forbidden curses? Tell me. Help me, please. The three something curses? One of them tortures people, one of them makes people do whatever you want, and then one of them obviously kills people. And stupid Wormtail used the killing one on Cedric Diggory. So sad because we really kind of see a tiny bit of him in Prisoner of Azkaban. We see a large chunk of him in Goblet of Fire and then dead. And I wanted to see more of him because I liked his character a lot even though his dad was like, Cedric's better than everyone, ha ha ha. When they had the Yule Ball after the first task, it was so obvious that Ron liked Hermione because he was scowling the entire time she was with Crumb. I thought it was hilarious because he was like, she's with Crumb and man. He obviously liked her and you know, they end up together. Is Snape gonna go back to Voldemort? Because he was a Death Eater and he seems like he would because he's evilish, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I want to have faith in Snape and think that he's a good-ish person and is not gonna kill people just to still be a Death Eater. Honestly, I figured Lucius Malfoy was a Death Eater. I mean, you might as well just give Draco the tattoo already and let him take after Daddy as a Death Eater too. He's just so awful and evil and Ugh. I wish he would fall off his broomstick during a Quidditch match. They talked a lot about Bagman, and I'm really wondering, is he evil? He has supposedly gave information to people. When Harry went into the Pensieve, they have him giving his testimony, and it's just, I don't know whether to believe him or not. The whole last scene, though, with the Death Eaters and Voldemort and Harry and the whole wizard thingy with the wand. The whole wand thing with Harry and Voldemort was absolutely amazing and all the echoes that were shooting out of the wand were amazing and it was really sad because Harry saw his parents and he saw Cedric and Cedric said take my body back to Hogwarts take it back to my parents I'm Maddie thanks for watching what did you think of this book leave me your comments down below tell me what you liked and disliked and I will see you soon for another video bye